we are going to continue on our study of inner transformation. The, we were talking, it started last week, the topic uh, related to forgiveness. So uh, following the, the teachings of Jesus about the Beatitudes that he pronounced on the Sermon on the Mount, together with the 13 virtues of uh, Benjamin Franklin, this is the basis for our studies. So now talking about uh, forgiveness. And it's actually a very big topic, right? <laughs> because mm -hmm. it is something that we have to constantly be reminded, not only in relation to others, to the world, to everything that happens, but also in relation to ourselves. So we finished last week with this um, statement by Gandhi, an eye for an eye will make the whole humanity blind. We talked about uh, the importance of reading ourselves of any kind of grudge, any kind of ill feelings that we may be nourishing and storing in ourselves, because it, it makes a huge impact in our health. And for that, we have uh, some um, or, uh, guidance as well by Dr. Deepak Chopra when he talks about forgiveness as well. Deepak Chopra uh, is a North American doctor born and trained in India with a specialization in USA in internal medicine and in endocrinology. So he talks about releasing toxic emotions. And of course, uh, not being able to forgive, uh, uh, keeping those, uh, you know, ill feelings, these grudges that we will keep within ourselves will make an impact. So he says that forgiveness is a powerful tool for personal healing and a spiritual transformation, but it is a skill that must be learned. By practicing the steps for releasing toxic emotions, we can make forgiveness a functional part of our growth instead of just a moral dictator. I find it very interesting, uh, this is a statement by, by Dr. Deepak Chopra, because, um, when, especially when he says that it's something, is a skill that must be learned, right? Uh, when we talk, and we talk extensively in terms of spiritism, how important for us it is for us to work on this, you know, self-awareness and inner transformation. So some of those virtues, some of those practices doesn't come naturally to us, naturally to us in a natural way. We are, those are things that we have to be, you know, have to start being becoming the focus, uh, one of the focus for ourselves, you know, in terms of this work in self-awareness and, of course, then trying to see how can we implement all this. So when we are talking about releasing toxic emotions, when we are talking about, you know, the conquering of uh, um, virtues, we are talking about a process that have, has to be worked on the day-to-day -day basis. And so he says, he, bring, uh, he brings together theoretical, practical, philosophical, and spiritual knowledge in a scientifically proven context. So when we are talking about the way that Dr. De Deepak Chopra approaches all this, we have to remember that he has been, you know, years working on that, not only as a medical doctor, but in terms of his uh, philosophy, as as well, the spiritual knowledge that he has and all the theory that he has, uh, his experience that he has acquired throughout the years. So uh, the best way to understand forgiveness is to realize that to forgive is to ask for forgiveness, is the best use of one's energy and also one of the most important paths to self-healing. So uh, this is uh, interesting as well, because you, when we are talking in terms of our energy, sometimes we put our energy so much in things 
that uh, are really detrimental, hurtful to us, that really can uh, compromise our physical, emotional, and spiritual health. So when we are, like when we saw before, when we are offering forgiveness, we are actually working on, on, on a path to self-heal. So, uh, this self-healing is so important to us. Hostility is an inflammatory emotion and causes physical inflammations as well, which can result in inflammatory cardiovascular episodes and is also linked to autoimmune disorders. So it, it, it's, uh, um, I hope that we will be able to get there soon, you know, a more comprehensive uh, understanding of health, you know, in, in its uh, all its aspect, not necessarily just the physical, but you know, the emotional, the, the spiritual together, to understand how much um, everything that we feel, uh, all the things, the way they impact us, the way that we we store them, the way we keep on reminding those things. I remember last week that Sonia was telling us about this article that she read, right, Sonia, on the New York, I think, uh, uh, New York Times, I, I don't remember quite well, and talking about how much we always keep on rem remembering of the bad experiences that we have lived. So when we do that, we are relieving all the sadness, all the emotions, because as emotional beings that we are, and with that releasing the, the energy that are related to those emotions, and of course, not only impacting once our physical body with all this, uh, negative energy but every time we keep on remembering then we will be doing the same over and over and again and so of course the more we cause this like it says here physical inflammations uh our our autoimmune system is going to be compromised as well so it is more than remembering pain it is also rumination over a past hurt so we keep on thinking and ruminating over and over and over again and this is what is very very negative you know this like dr Deepak chopra calls it toxic emotions any questions or comments at this point okay so what is who is most damaged by holding on toxic energy toxic energy the answer of course is obvious you are hurting yourself more than you are hurting another we talked about this last week when we said uh you know sometimes we 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 have those feelings towards towards people that have no clue whatsoever that we had them in the first place yeah. you know and we keep on, on on maintaining ourselves in this kind of energy let's say that you you meet a friend today and then all of a sudden you feel wow oh, this friend uh, uh or or this colleague um um, was so indifferent to me and then we keep on you know ruminating on that on this kind of emotion what happened why what did i do we never we never stop to think that perhaps there is something happening with this person and uh, it just couldn't give you what you were in need at that time it has nothing to do with you but since we are very normally self-centered beings we don't think about what is happening to, to others and uh, what could lead them to be that happy or that sad or that indifferent. It's always something to do with us and it's always us questioning ourselves. It's always us ruminating about those things that people, you know, the other have no clue whatsoever about everything that is happening here with us. So this is a very important, I think, thing for us to think about uh how much we uh above all are hurting ourselves 
when we keep on storing those negative emotions. Any comment or question? Susada, um, yes. I'm thinking, uh, I think that the best way I feel that if we don't forgive, we won't forget. So if that's empty, naturally we're gonna go over it. You know, for any reason, anything that comes up is gonna come back. Mm -hmm. So we have to forgive. I mean, it is so important, I believe, no? We keep hurting ourselves, but that's because we didn't let go of, of the pain or of the hurt that we went through. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it's like you said, it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can, for any moment you're walking down the street and, and something comes along and, and it reminds you of something, you have to be constantly on guard, you know, not getting yourself, uh, you know, uh, lost in, in all this past negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. it's like You see, it's so interesting what you're saying, because normally people say that uh, we can forgive, but we cannot forget, because you will only forget if you have dementia. Yeah. But the thing is, we can forget. Oh. Or we can not keep on constantly bringing that into our mind. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, when we are talking about a relationship between two people, okay, regardless of what the status of this relationship is, mother, father, um, husbands, wives, children, daughters, it doesn't matter, friends, we have a history with them. Right. And many times what happened is, you know, again, mentioning what Sonia um, talked to us last week, we, we tend to remember the bad things that they did to us and not the good things. Hmm. So why do I choose to forget or not to have constantly in my mind or bringing to my mind the good things, the good experiences and we allow the negative ones that I'm sure are in many, many cases are much smaller than the good ones. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a relationship with this person, right? Yeah. Why do we keep insisting on, on, on bringing to mind only the negative? So it's not a matter of forgetting um, completely. But it's, it's not bringing to mind things that are not necessary for, for us to, to remember anymore or to, you know, to constantly be, be there in the present. And if so, let us bring what is positive instead of thinking about that, uh, you know, argument that we had. Let's think about, you know, that nice dinner that we had together, that we left uh, and that we had a nice conversation. So yes, I think we can we can work on this forget uh, forgetfulness that you mentioned as well, uh, without necessarily implying that we are suffering from a, a, any kind of mental process that we would uh, 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 hinder the possibility of us re remembering things that happen in our lives. Yeah. Yes, Sonia. As you mentioned, from me then it means you feel today something happened many years ago mm -hmm. then you bring in your life now something was done there mm -hmm. then then we feel again and again you have bad feelings and then maybe you leave the illusion of bad things happen. Mm -hmm. And then why you not use your, if you need to use your illusion, think about dreaming good things. Yes. Yeah, and the process of forgiving and to forget, it's not easy, it's only words. Mm -hmm. When you really want to work, on this kind of pain, make you feel again and again. And you, okay, I forgive, okay, I'm going to forget. It's not easy because we need 
a process to understand, to understand that person, to understand yourself and your feelings about that thing. Mm -hmm. The fact is many times when you start to analyze that situation, we can use our lessons and see it's not as strong as I really feel in the past. Mm -hmm. Then we start to understand the other person is not yet in this path. Yeah. And then make it easier to us to really forgive, to really forget, to let this pain go in our lives. Yeah. And, and you see, I was thinking while you were saying uh, that as well, that uh, overall we have a very pessimistic way of looking at, you know, at things uh, that the world uh, events and if uh, uh, people and ourselves so the thing is we always have this uh, uh feeling on the back of our mind that oh well i failed i failed once i'm going to fail again you know that person did something to me that person is going to do that again you know uh, we we have this lack of um a hope uh, sometimes and and uh and this is actually because of lack of faith lack of faith in us lack of faith in others lack of understanding that the law is that of progress we are all progressing maybe too slowly yes but we are all progressing so when we truly understand that we should expect the best of us and the best of people okay some people did that it doesn't mean that they are going to repeat their same behavior we did something it doesn't mean that we we will repeat or we should be thinking and meditating not to repeat this same kind of uh, you know behavior that will lead us to uh, not trusting in ourselves not not forgiving ourselves and not forgetting others forgiving others which is very important as well when we are talking about it so uh, Nelson Mandela once said it's a, a, this phrase is a, not a attributed to him but it's uh, something that he mentioned resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies so again it's the toxic emotions that we will be uh, ingesting and uh, not necessarily is impacting the other person because like i said sometimes this other person do not even know that we have this kind of emotions towards them so learning how to let go of toxic toxic emotions such as hostility is the essence of learning how to forgive because forgiveness is basically releasing your attachment or identification with the conditioned, conditioned response. What is he talking about here? Mm. And it's crazy when we think about it, but we attach ourselves to negative emotions, to hostility, to those grudges that we, we, we feel attached, like, I don't want to let it go why i i have a theory i think that sometimes we we keep them because we need a constant reminder that other people fail and do bad things and so on the back of our minds we are giving ourselves excuses to do the same so I keep on remind myself, oh, but that, that person did that, or, you know, look at what is happening in the world, or look at it, you know, and then it makes me feel less um, guilty, I mean, supposedly, because in, in truth, it doesn't happen, uh, about my own behaviors, my own responsibility of improvement. So this is, you know, it becomes our identification 
we, I, I, I don't know how to live without hate, hating someone. It's part of who I am. I've been hating this person, I don't know for how long. And I mean, if you remove that, I will feel an emptiness inside. It's crazy, right, when we think about it, but it, it's so much reality uh, because, you know, it will, when we remove that, we will feel empty. But the thing is, we have to feel this emptiness uh, with uh, the uh, contrary emotions, with positive emotions, with good things. And if we, we fill ourselves with negative emotions, we don't leave room for the good ones. So the seven steps process, according to Dr. Uh, Deepak Chopra, to release toxic emotions, taking responsibility for your emotion. So like, uh, like we always keep on saying here, you know, self-awareness, right? Uh, I have to know what I'm feeling. And I have to be, to, to really say, yeah, I do have uh, a ill feeling towards, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, a person. It can be a pet. Maybe your spouse has a pet that you hate and you have to, <laughs> to deal with that. Or it, it may be uh, for political reasons. It, it can be whatever. So many different things, right? Witnessing the emotion means... Um, allowing ourselves to really dip into that, uh, dive into that emotion and see how it makes you feel. Define or labeling, because it can be hatred, it can be indifference, it can be uh, something else, but all in the family that, you know, represents a, a new feeling. Expressing the emotion knowing what it represents in you, what it's, uh, how, uh, you know, that emotion makes you feel and, and understanding the root of the emotion, sharing the emotion, releasing the emotional through ritual, celebrating the release and moving on. So, uh, sharing, meaning I can talk to others, I can talk to myself, like, you know, I know that I'm feeling that I have to find a way, let's say that you say, uh, okay, I'm going to use a technique of saying, I will release myself of this hatred that I have towards something or someone. And I will breathe in and out two, three times. And with that, I feel, you know, you find a symbolic way of, uh, you know, releasing that. I, I get a stone and I throw this stone or I bury this seed. That I mean, you can make even a ritual, a symbolic. Of course, this is according to the, you know, the, uh, the ways that... Um, uh, the, the practices of Dr. Uh, Deepak Chopra, us in spiritualism, we don't need spiritism, we don't need to, to do uh, any, any kind of this, you know, ritual technique, but maybe it does help. If I just breathe out, or I imagine that I'm blowing a balloon with all the negative emotions and I release into the air. And then, you know, if we keep on doing that constantly, it is going to help us, even if it's just by thought. Anyone would like to say something or share any experience or, or techniques you may have? I, I, I could share. Just, okay. uh, you, know, we, you know that we are a lot of sisters and we all have our personality and everything. And, and one or once or twice, uh, you know, something keeps repeating from one of them. And, I, but what you're telling us now, what Depart, what he's giving us is beautiful. Like, but what, what I want to ask is that if I go prepared and I know that I know this person is who, who she is or he is, and I know who I am too, I try. And then 
I forgive. I stop. I'm not going there anymore. I'm going with a clear mind. But then the person begins again and says things. And so I try my best and then inside I'm boiling. I'm saying, okay, I have to, you know, you have to understand this. You have to do this. You don't do that. Don't say this. Don't do that. But what I'm saying, we, I release, but it keeps coming back. Do you understand? Even if it's just one day. So it's, a, it's, a, it's work. And I, I'm glad you went through this today. <laughs> I need this badly. Yeah. Taking the responsibility like says here with your emotions, uh, Defi defining it. Yeah, I understand it. But what happens with the person doesn't understand? Yeah, so right, but the thing is, we always say we cannot control others, which can no. only control ourselves and barely, right? <laughs> barely, right. Uh, but I mean, when you were talking, <clears throat> uh, you know, describing, you know, <laughs> boiling inside, maybe if you start paying attention, you know, the first time that happened, you boil it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it was a little, a little less. Third time, fourth time, and, and tenth time, you're just lukewarm water, right? <laughs> you're not. I mean, there are things that are always going to be bothering us. That, or I mean, not always. Of course, we will read. Uh, if not in this life, in ourselves of this. If not in this life, in a, 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 a next one. But. Um, the thing is that we will see that, okay, they are hurtful. They shouldn't be this way. But each time they bother us less, which is progress already. Okay. Uh, and uh, it will come to a point that it, 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 it's really going to bother us very little. Still, we may have this question on the back of our minds, why they don't change? Yes. Right? <laughs> Which yeah. is, I mean, we are entitled okay. to have that. Right. I mean, yeah. Are they never going to learn? Yes, they yeah. will because we are in this process and we are learning. Right. So I, I think, you know, we always have to be concerned with us, with what we are doing. And yeah. that if there are situations and people that are, you know, absolutely masters <laughs> in, in really testing us, uh, let's see if at least we can minimize their effect on us. And sometimes let's say that you now you boil when you are before the situation. You go home, it's over. Before you were keeping on boiling for the whole week, right? Until next meeting that was already on this hit point that boiling would just take. 30 seconds and that's it. So okay. now, I mean, if we really pay attention, you say, okay, I, ca I cannot yet be completely indifferent right. to, you know, to, to that uh, energy. But right. I don't need to take this energy with me home. See, yes. Or keep holding this energy with me. You see, all of that is progress. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not no innocent person. I, I, I analyze myself. So sometimes I say, why did I say that? Okay. Next time I'm not going to keep my mouth shut. Okay. I'm not going to say anything. So I'm analyzing myself too, because I'm not no perfect person. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the person, it's me too. And this is work that we have to, I have to do. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Uh, this is what we're here for, right? Learning and trying to do the best that we can. Yeah, this is something that sometimes we are masters in doing as well. We go there, we're like, you know, like a scorpion, we go in and sting the person and wants the person to have no reaction, right? And right. then it's all their fault because everything started. So yes, we, uh, again, right? That's why this journey <laughs> is not an easy one, right? Because, you know, it's a... Uh, uh, a, an inner process in, oh, in uh, taming yourself, yes. taming your emotions, dealing with the emotions of others, the, you know, the, how others are going to impact you or, or relate to you. So it, it's quite a lot. Yeah. It's quite a lot, actually. So that's why it's so hard. It's okay. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, there is this doctor as well. We are bringing, you know, all this um, uh, um, research studies by other doctors because, you know, when we are talking about forgiveness, many people tend to think that we are just, you know, talking about that because we, we have religious uh, feelings that is related to, you know, Jesus said that we have to forgive. And now science... Mm. Is showing that over and over <clears throat> the benefits of forgiveness and the harm that that you know holding negative emotions can do with that. That's why we are bringing you know we we brought uh, we brought the other doctor first and then we we're mm. talking about the Park Chauvin and now about this doctor Worthington, uh, a PhD professor of psychology at Virginia. He also comes with what he calls reach the five steps to forgiveness. Uh, and he says that forgiveness is both a decision and a real change in emotional experience. Mm. That change in emotion is related to better mental and physical health. Can we imagine how many people go to, you know, uh, a psychiatrist, a, a, a therapist, and, you know, to talk, to talk to them, and it's everything about, you know, not forgiving their parents, their, their background, their situation in life, the people that are now with them, that everything, how many of the problems that we will bring to therapy is related to lack of forgiveness and even forgiveness of ourselves because we feel that we are not worthy we feel that we we've been doing bad things everything i think you know or or great part of our emotions are are actually circling around this word forgiveness so he says Recall the hurt. Let's see what why am I feeling this way? Empathize with the one who committed hurt. Empathize here means, like we were saying before, we are always very self-centered. Yeah. And uh so all the word revolver revolves around ourselves, right? Imagine yeah. how many words we have to have because each one of us here is already a different world. Uh and uh, we are always thinking that it's personal without realizing that sometimes circumstances led that person to act to us to, in a way that was hurtful. Even like you said, uh, Soraida, because we are not perfect, far from it, sometimes we are the ones giving, you know, hating first. Yes without uh, realizing that with our behavior so when we we do that we have to do the altruistic gift like offer the altruistic gift of forgiveness let's say that yeah i mean even if the person had all the excuse in the world to act this way with you mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you're not going to be hurt because that was not a good action yes. but i can empathize i can I, I can empathize as well, even if it is only with the fact that they maybe they didn't have an excuse, but they are humans. Yes. And they also commit mistakes like we do. Exactly. And those, and then, you know, we are going to offer the forgiveness, but we have to commit to that. It's not that just to say, oh, like, you know, we say, I'll, yeah. I'll forgive you, but I will never forget. <laughs> this is not commitment. No. Right. The commitment means I'm, I'm going to remove that from my mind. I, I, I no longer want the remembrance that I have from this person to be this one, this bad, bad one. And hold on to that. Because, I mean, how many times we commit? OK, Mondays, let's start a diet. Tuesday, oh, the diet's no longer in effect today. Right. So yeah. hold on to your commitment to your forgiveness. I, I, I really like this, uh, you know, this very simple way that Dr. Worthington presents uh, the reach is within our reach of each one to do that, to uh, use techniques uh, yes. and how, like we were saying before, 
medical science is validating this process in order for us to have mental balance, mental health, and of course, how this impact our physical health yes. as a consequence also our physical health. Any comments or questions? Yes, Sonia? Very interesting, this doctor mentioned about forgiveness is a decision. Mm -hmm. Because it's not easy for us to forgive. Then we can oh, make a decision. I'm going to work in this situation with this person. All the pain this person or oh, hurt this person always make to me and every time when this person is stuck i can remember about this decision make a commitment with myself mm -hmm. and then it start because when we make a decision it means we are read evaluation the facts mm -hmm. you're read analyzing about situations hurt me, who pain, who much pain myself. I really want to have a good relationship with this person. And then we start to thinking about, it's the same time we can see the excuses for this person to analyze the situation and Mm, work on efforts inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then it's for me, this word make a decision to forgive, it's very relevant because it's a tool you can use for all cases of forgiveness. And you see, Sonia, they, like he says here, hold on to this forgiveness, right? Because uh, the thing is, we sometimes we make a, this decision, but of course, because we are humans and it's still very imper imperfect human beings, um, the person may hurt us again, right? Like, you know, I'm going to boil inside again. And then the immediate response is, you see, it's not worth for me to, you know, to think about forgiving or this person. So we keep on expecting uh, the person to err again, to commit something bad again, to justify us not forgiving. Uh, without going through all that, thinking, empathizing with the situation. Sometimes, you know, life has been very hard for everyone lately, right? And um, everyone that I talk to is going through something and sometimes, you know, through really difficult things. And of course, this impact our emotions, not to mention that we are all with PTSD. PTSD how do we, we, could we say that, Pete? PSTD, right? PSTD uh, uh, with uh, post pandemia, right? With, in, 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 you know, in more or less, we all are in the aftermath of a pandemia that affects us directly, loved ones, and our lifestyle. So everyone is much more sensitive now to the minimal things that can happen to us. So this is why we also have to be very careful with all those things, right? Yes. Let's go here. Um, so today we are going to, to finish that there is more for us to analyze that next week okay. uh, with this remark by Mark Twain's forgiveness. Forgiveness is the fragrance the violet sheds on the hill that has crushed it. I think this is so beautiful. It's really, you know, understanding the remark of Jesus. If someone has hit you on the right cheek, offer the other one. 
And again, remembering that he was not saying literally, right? He was saying someone presents to you the face of bad, you give back the face of good. And this is the way that we are going to be changing the world. When we start re reacting less with our guts <laughs> and more with our heart. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I think this, uh, uh, you know, so beautiful. And I think that on an energy level, perhaps this is what what happens. You know, when we are sending bad, we know that thoughts have a color, have smell, have shape, right? A wavelength, a particular wavelength. So when I'm sending back goodness, when I keep myself in peace, it also has a smell, and this is smell is is a perfume, right? Yes. So that I'm releasing in the world. So maybe that could be one thing for us to say. You know, next time a, a negative force comes into into you, you think now I'm going to release the perfume of goodness. You know, that that would be nice. Mm, <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Any comment or question? Let's see what we have. Yes, that's a, a next question. Uh, yes, that's time for giving others and self forgiveness. So now, should they will stop here? Okay. Thank you, Gusada. Uh, no so <laughs> any comments? More? Any questions? Welcome everyone that joined later. <laughs> <laughs> This this talk is very profound. Then we need more time because <laughs> for right. everybody, when we start to talk about forgiving, pop in our mind and our feelings, ebullition, start the ebullition to remind many, many facts, many people we need to work in this in this forgiveness, then thank you. <laughs> you still need a lot of work yes. in our <laughs> forgiveness process. Yeah, you're absolutely right, so, Sonia. Uh, I, I believe we are going to stay in this talk another two weeks, but yes. uh, it, it, it's really important. I think it's one of the most important things, and it touched so other, so many other things that we mentioned already, like you know, humility, and accepting our weaknesses, and accepting, like Soraya mentioned, well. Uh, I know that I don't act that well. Sometimes we all don't, right? Uh, so, uh, which should not be an excuse for us not to change, but uh, acknowledging that is what makes us, us change. So it, it, it releases us from, you know, selfishness. It makes us more compassionate, uh, in, not only in relation to others, but in relation to ourselves and, and be becoming more active appreciative of what we have. Uh, we hear so many things, people complaining about their children. And I know so many people that would, would love to have had children and, and couldn't. And or complaining about their spouses and others that, you know, uh, don't have a spouse anymore or never had the opportunity of having a constant partner and others that complain about their mother and father and, you know, about complain about, you know, their jobs. And, and, and we are not appreciative of, of what we have. And none of us have has everything right or has the possibility of having everything like you know there are people that would love to have pets but they are not allowed in their homes to have pets all those little things that we take for granted uh like for instance i would love to have more more plants in my house uh, i have a little balcony but every plant that i put it in my balcony i live to in a high-rise building they die 
So regardless of what plant I put it there, I don't know if I don't, I absolutely have the opposite of a green finger, but all of them die. So I miss having plants around me, but, I, but they, they, don't, they don't survive. So, you know, the little things we take for granted, like yesterday I was at the center and I was looking at all those plants that we have there at the window. So, oh my God, they are so beautiful. I wish I could have them at home, but I don't have a place to put them or if I put them outside, they die. Anyway, so all those things that we have to be so much more appreciative, um, you know, the intellect that we have, the you know, being able to already have this, uh, um, committed ourselves to this spiritual journey. Uh, so it, it's, uh, I, I think it's uh, one thing that oh, we will occupy our minds more with good things. And with that, we will have less space or less time to think about the bad things that surround us. Okay, so.